हेलो गाइज वेलकम बैक टू रैपिड डेंटिस्ट्री सो वी वर डिस्कसिंग योर एपिथीलियल न्यू प्लाजम्स ऑफ द ओरल कैविटी ओके एंड अंडर दैट वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट ओ पी एम डीज दैट इज योर ओरल पोटेंशियल वेलिग्नेंट डिसऑर्डर्स ओके एंड अंडर दैट वी हैड स्टडीड अबाउट ल्यूको प्लाकिया इन योर सेकेंड पार्ट and now we are going to uh, see about oral submucous fibrosis in this part that is your part 3 all right so very important your oral submucous fibrosis so so who has considered your oral submucous fibrosis as a pre malignant condition so it's a pre malignant condition that is a generalized state which has a higher chance of development into malignant condition okay so that is a generalized state of the body that is what your oral submucous fibrosis is a pre malignant condition and it's defined by who as an insidious chronic disease okay so chronic meaning it's from a longer duration and insidious meaning slow onset okay slow onset so it's sla- uh, starts slowly and it progresses over a long period of time it takes around 2 to 5 years to develop okay so that is known as your insidious that is slow onset and it affects any part of the oral cavity and sometimes pharynx also okay so it may in fact affect any part of the oral cavity okay and occasionally it is preceded by or associated with vesicle formation so sometimes occasionally you know before development of these uh, fibrotic bands there occurs vesicle formation okay it might be present it may not be present okay but it is always always associated with your juxta epithelial inflammation reaction so what is you know juxta epithelial so this is your epithelium and this is your connective tissue so the interface between your epithelium and connective tissue this junction just right here you see a lot of inflammation happening so that is your juxta epithelium okay just adjacent to your epithelium so that is where you see a lot of inflammation okay followed by fibroelastic changes of the lamina propria so lamina propria is your connective tissue so what happens a lot of fibrosis starts happening in this connective tissue in this lamina propria with your epithelial atrophy so this epithelium right here it starts to atrophy and then later on all of this leads to stiffness of the oral mucosa your oral mucosa gets very stiff and it causes trismus that is your mouth opening reduces and you cannot eat properly because your mouth opening reduces everything becomes stiff your tongue becomes stiff your, um, your buccal mucosa becomes stiff your uvula is involved so whole of your oral cavity becomes stiff so you cannot eat later on so why this happens is that because you have in in osms it is caused by your areca nut chewing okay so areca nut meaning your supari so when someone eats that there is a lot of irritants released from areca nut so you have alkaloids that is your ericoline released from areca nut so that passes through your epithelium and it irritates your connective tissue so it causes a lot of inflammation happening in your connective tissue and now what happens is there could be a breakage in your basement membrane causing your edema so your fluid leaks also from this basement membrane due to your irritants and inflammation and lot of this this and that happening here so that leads to your vesicle formation okay and this juxta epithelial inflammation is caused by your irritants coming here so irritants causes this inflammation and then what happens is due to this hyper immune response uh, due to that a lot of fibroblast appear and a lot of fibrosis happens okay so this connective tissue it undergoes fibrosis 
and your blood vessels they are also very strangulated due to this inflammation and fibrosis happening here so that would lead to your strangulation of the blood vessels so this epithelial epithelium cannot get the nutrients it requires so it undergoes atrophy so later on this epithelium undergoes atrophy it leads to your stiffness of the oral mucosa because of all the fibrosis and everything and then later on your mouth opening reduces because of the stiffness okay so that was your uh, how this is happening that is a pathogenesis in brief so we are going to see about it in detail that you know how is this happening what i told you that who called osmf as a precancerous condition and i told you the etiology that how osmf is caused is due to your mainly erythronut that is your supari it has a lot of alkaloids that is your ericoline guacoline all that all those things and then you have tannins flavonoids catechins and your copper so we are going to see this pathogenesis in detail just uh, just in a while but also your nutritional deficiencies may cause your osmf okay for example your iron deficiency so you have a syndrome associated with your iron deficiency known as your plummer vinson syndrome so in this syndrome you have a oral manifestation that is your osmf so osmf is seen in this syndrome this is due to your iron deficiency so iron deficiency may cause it and then you have b complex deficiencies your collagen disorders and immunological disorders so all of this you know they may cause osmf as well okay so these were the etiology of uh, your oral submucous fibrosis now if we talk about the patho pathogenesis that how all of this is happening is simply that you know now since the uh, oral mucosa is undergoing fibrosis so what is happening is there is a lot of collagen production so collagen is your protein okay and this collagen is increased in production and decreased breakdown is happening that is why a lot of fibers are producing okay because the collagen already present is not breaking down and your new collagen is producing as well so all of this is leading to fibrosis of the oral mucosa now before going to the pathogenesis we need to know that how the normally uh, collagen forms so collagen is a triple helix molecule okay it's a triple uh, helix molecule now what happens is this cell i've made is this is a fibroblast okay so how fibroblast is able to form collagen is that this starts from a molecule known as pre pro collagen now this pre pro collagen it undergoes hydroxylation glycosylation all those processes and convert into pro collagen now this process hydroxylation it requires your vitamin c so that is why in your scurvy what we see is a defective collagen okay so that is why a lot of bleeding gums your gums start bleeding in your scurvy because the collagen is not proper okay now this pro collagen it under it you know it comes out of the cell out of the fibroblast by your exocytosis and now this pro collagen converts into tropo collagen so this pro collagen is already a triple helix now now what happens is a lot many tropo collagen bind together to form a collagen fiber now for that cross linking has to happen between the different tropo collagens so for that cross linking you have a molecule known as copper okay so copper act on an enzyme known as lysyl oxidase so this by the help of this enzyme lysyl oxidase copper what it does it cross links your various tropo collagens and it forms your collagen fiber okay so that was your actual uh, formation of the collagen so here comes the role of the copper so what it does it increases your cross linking so uh, basically your collagen is unable to break down it becomes very stronger 
so that is why your erica nut has since your erica nut has copper in it what happens is this copper increases the cross linking of these uh, tropocollagens together and that would lead to decreased breakdown of the collagen so that is what we are going to see just now that the actual pathogenesis how this erica nut is causing this fibrosis and everything so i told you that erica nut has your alkaloids it has your flavonoids and your copper okay so alkaloid is your ericoline and your polyphenols come under your flavonoids and you have copper so copper i told you what copper does is your it increases the cross linking between your tropocollagens by the help of this enzyme known as lysyl oxidase and it is also cytotoxic this copper okay now what happens this these alkaloids this ericoline these you know releases certain reactive oxygen species okay and certain growth factors cytokines so what hap what is happening is that there is a lot of inflammation happening just uh, adjacent to your epithelium and that is caused due to irritants i told you so this irritant ericoline it causes a lot of inflammation in your connective tissue so that inflammation is leading to the release of your growth factors your cytokines your reactive oxygen species your increased timps okay that is your tissue inhibitors of metalloproteinases okay tissue inhibitors of metal uh, metalloproteinases and your decreased mmps that is a matrix metalloproteinases okay now all of these these growth factors and cytokines for example your tgf beta your tnf alpha your dmp gamma so all of these uh, is you know these molecules specifically for example this alpha v beta 6 integrins and your smad and mepk so all of this is acting on your fibroblast so these molecules this inflammatory molecules these act on the fibroblast and they increase the collagen synthesis from the fibroblast okay and it also decreases the collagen degradation so both these things are happening and your reactive oxygen species it also causes your a lot of destruction in your uh, cells okay in your endothelial cells and that would lead to decreased vascularity so you have in a blood vessel you know that the innermost layer is your endothelial cell okay in your endothelial cell layer so this reactive oxygen species it it goes into the endothelial cell and causes causes a destruction destruction there so it leads to decreased vascularity and that would lead to epithelial atrophy okay so we we had seen in the definition that the epithelium also undergoes atrophy in your osmf okay now all these growth factors cytokines your uh, increased timps all these are leading to your increased fibroblast production and decreased collagen degradation and what does flavonoids do so these flavonoids they causes your abnormal cross linking so again like copper they are also increasing your uh, cross linking between the tropocollagens and uh, thereby they are also leading to your decreased uh, collagen degradation so all of this these processes help increase the fibrosis and ultimately they would lead to your osmf over the course of years okay so that was your pathogenesis of this uh, condition known as osmf where your you have alkaloids polyphenols and copper copper increases the cross linking and your alkaloids and ericoline it causes the release of your growth factor cytokines reactive oxygen species and your timps and all of these molecules later on lead to your epithelial atrophy your fibroblast it stimulates the fibroblast to cause a increase in collagen synthesis and decrease in the collagen degradation and all of this is increasing the fibrosis and causing osmf okay now if we talk about the clinical features of osmf it can be categorized as your early stages and your advanced stages so your early stages what happens is that you experience burning sensation in the mouth so whenever you eat something spicy 
there occurs a lot of burning sensation in your mouth and see in this image also you can see that there can occur certain blisters and ulceration also so your mucosa becomes a little pale and your saliva also increases so there occurs a lot of salivation and certain gustatory defects so gustatory meaning that there is a loss of sense of taste okay and sometimes your mouth may become dry very dry also so this increase in saliva is caused due to your increased copper in the mouth okay and then you have generalized inflamed oral mucosa so that is stomatitis so stomatitis happens in your mouth like all the time your mucosa is inflamed so mainly you see your burning sensation and certain ulcerations your saliva may become increased at certain times and sometimes dry mouth may be happening so all of this and in histopath what you're going to see is your juxta epithelial inflammation starts to happen in your early stages so you see a lot of inflammation happening your macrophages your fibroblast and your um, blood filled capillaries all of these are seen under your epithelial connective tissue junction okay now in advanced stages what you see is your blanching happens so blanching simply means that your oral mucosa becomes very pale and marble like so that is known as blanching of the oral so whenever you uh, you apply pressure on the mucosa it becomes very pale and marble like so that is your blanching now other than that what happens is the mucosa appears slightly opaque okay now these bands these are mostly symmetric okay so these are present bilaterally and mostly symmetric on both the sides of the oral cavity now you see that white fibrous bands are present so these are white in color and these are vertical in direction so these bands they may involve your pterygo mandibular raphe also so in advanced stages this raphe may, may be involved by your vertical bands and now uvula so your uvula is normally your hockey stick shaped but in this condition what happens it becomes fixed and short and deviated so it deviates normally your uvula hockey stick shape so it deviates from its uh, normal uh, location okay and it becomes a little shorter shrunken uvula you see okay and it is it becomes fixed and along with that you have impaired tongue movement also your so tongue is also cannot move properly because your muscles in your uh, mucosa all of these have a lot of fibrosis happening okay and you cannot even blow you are unable to blow or whistle and you are unable to swallow so you cannot eat properly and there is a nasal tone to your voice so all of these things happen in your advanced stages of your osms all right so next if we talk about that you know the osms is was classified by your khanna and andred into four stages so this classification happened on the basis of interincisal opening so your stage 1 was having a incisal opening more than 35 mm more than or equal to 35 mm so this is a mild stage okay where you see only burning or certain ulcerations or recurrent stomatitis that is a inflamed oral mucosa but the mouth opening is still okay okay but the second stage it involves your mouth opening reducing to your 26 to 35 mm and what you see is your mottled and marble like mucosa so that is what we were calling as blanched mucosa so blanching happens and you see pale fibrosis alternating with your normal pink colored mucosa so you see pale colored fibrosis along with your normal mucosa alternating with normal mucosa and in stage 3 you see mouth opening reducing to your 15 to 25 mm and you see palpable vertical bands so these bands are palpated and you you know feel these vertical bands in the oral in the buccal mucosa 
in stage 3 and the patient is unable to blow or whistle. Okay. And these bands, they radiate from the tarago mandible raphe. So they have involved your uh, posterior part of the cavity. Okay. And then later on in advanced stage, the mouth opening reduces to less than or equal to 15 mm. That is very less. Okay. That is your 1.5 centimeters. Even less than that. So your facial pillars they become very thick and short and your uvula shrunk, uh, gets shrunken it gets deviated and your tongue becomes restricted so your tongue movement is also restricted and there occurs atrophy or of your vermilion border of the lip okay so your vermilion border also gets atrophied and this there may occur your pre-malignant and malignant changes also under your advanced condition because we know that the OSMF is a pre-malignant condition so it might lead to malignancy later on if you are if you have already reached your advanced stage okay so that was your classification given by Khanna and Andred of your OSMF based on your mouth opening okay next what you see is that how do we treat this condition okay so mainly we need to restrict the habit so we need to restrict the habit of erica nut chewing so simply we need to restrict the habit first and then we can give corticosteroids which would decrease the inflammation so steroids with would decrease the inflammation which is leading to your fibrosis and then the third thing is hyaluronidase Okay, so hyaluronidase, what it does is it weakens your intercellular cementing substances. So basically you have a lot of fibers which are cross-linking together. So it weakens that cementing substance which holds the, these fibers together. So that the fibers may, you know, undergo degradation. So that it degrades and it also decreases your collagen formation. That was your hyaluronidase. Then you have placental extract also. So all of these together, your corticosteroid, hyaluronidase and your placental extract, they work great together. Okay. So, and these placental extract, this mainly increases your blood circulation. Since because your blood vessels are getting strangulated here and epithelial atrophy is happening. So we don't want that. So we are going to need something which is going to increase the blood circulation also and then we are going to need certain nutritional support because we know that the nutrition for example the iron deficiency your um, b complex deficiency all of that was in the etiology of this osmf so we need a proper nutritional support also and we would need physiotherapy so that you know we can call, we can do forceful mouth openings we can do certain mouth exercises and then we can use certain heat therapies okay surgery surgery is not normally recommended it is not preferred because uh, if we cut the bands okay it would lead to even more fibrosis because whenever it would heal it would try to heal there would be more scar tissue formation so that scar tissue formed would lead to more of the fibrosis later on and more disability. So this surgery would turn out to be uh, not very helpful in the long term. So that is why this is not preferred. Okay. So that was your treatment. Normally treatment in treatment we do corticosteroids hyaluronidase your placental extract and your physiotherapy nutrition support so this is what is done and your habit needs to be restricted first that was that is the first and most important thing so that was about osmf we had learned about the treatment and we had seen about the classification about your clinical features uh, your early and advanced stages pathogenesis we had seen uh, and then the etiology and your definition so all of these things are very important in your osmf and osmf is asked so many times it is a very important oral potentially malignant condition all right so this is all about this video and i'll see you in the next video and thank you so much